So as, as Norman said, I am actually a member of the Proposi team, but um, that's not what I will, I, I will not be talking about my work on Proposi or something like that. But rather, I will present work of a postdoc in our group, Luis Aguilera, um, as a user of Kopasi or as someone who has developed additional methods based on, on Kopasi, and he could not make it here, so I have the pleasure to present work mostly done by him in this case. So, um, so it is about fitting distributions of uh, or fitting stochastic models to measured or observed distributions uh, in a, in a signaling uh, problem and so so what is it about? So the test case for the fitting method he, he developed is basically the interferon induced Jackson signaling pathway now in an application for antiviral response of cells, the experimental data coming from mouse mouse cells. And and this is just an overview of of the numbers of molecules that is, I mean, very roughly involved in the different steps of that process. So, so there is uh, several thousands, for example, receptor molecule, uh, receptor proteins here where the interferon can bind. Then we have the Jackson pathway where different parts of that uh, signaling pathway have different molecule counts, typical molecule counts, and it ends then in, in basically genes that are only available in uh, very small numbers here. Um, the, yeah. And the, the fact that some of these numbers, and especially the, the numbers of the genes and the binding sites or pro promoter sites of, of the gene, are very low, makes it um, somehow um, uh, appear apparent good idea to look at how one would go on to uh, simulate a uh, model such a system stochastically in order to deal with the stochasticity that appears as a result of having low numbers of molecules in a system. <coughs> so, um, so what's going on here in, in this model is that um, there has been observations, um, experimental observations, that actually um, in this specific uh, pathway, interferon, uh, check that signaling, and so on, leading to the expression of IRF7 and other antiviral response proteins, and so on, that there is observed stochasticity. We will see the experimental results in a while. And, and the noise can enter at several levels. The noise can enter in the transcription or in the translation events or um, or actually also in the binding of, uh, of the uh, transcription factors. So what kind of data do we have? So if you observe a single cell, I mean, and the experiment that is done here is that basically interferon is applied to the cells, and then you could, uh, in this case, uh, you can observe that either in these in this case, the cell responds by activation of the IRF7 uh, gene expression and or not. So that's an observation that it typically either activates or not. And then you can repeat that cell on uh, that, that experiment on a big number of cells, in this case with live cell imaging and tagging uh, uh, luminescence uh, um, a thing to, to this IRF7 uh, protein and observing it uh, under a microscope using live cell imaging. So you can basically repeat it for a huge number of uh, cells and you get a distribution of results. And in this case, we will see that the distribution of cells, that, uh, of, of states that you observe is bimodal. So you don't have a continuum of, cell, uh, of states after a certain time after stimulation, but rather a number of cells is activated and the number of cells is not activated. And you do not typically have cells that are halfway activated or something like that. So a true bimodal uh, um, pattern or distribution of results here. And the corresponding simulations that would allow us to mimic this behavior or to model it would then be a stochastic simulation where a single run of the stochastic simulation here, um, drawn in red, would then basically, uh, for example, show a switching after a certain time, but 
whether this switching from the low state of IRF7 response or the high state, whether this occurs and after how long a time it occurs is a random process that is governed by the stochastic processes in the model. And what you see here, the, the gray things in the background, is basically what happens if you repeat that many hundreds of thousands of times. The simulation, every simulation will give you a different time with a different point of time where the switching occurs or not. And then here on the very right, you see that that basically the end result of um, of, a stochast of many stochastic simulation result, uh, runs for a certain time then forms also a bimodal distribution where you can see that with a certain probability you get an inactivated cell and with a certain probability you get an activated cell and the width of these I mean is, is also an indication of of how exactly the stochasticity of the of the process is implemented. So the data is was friendly provided by uh, the group of uh, Mario Köster. Basically, experiments were done by Wolfert Wand uh, at DKFZ, um, and um, they published the results, but they were provided to us by them. And so, yeah, I already mentioned that, and since this is more about the method, I'll go on very briefly. So, so it's the first <coughs> tagged with this reporter, and uh, the um, cells are observed and they're measured. And after measuring a big number or a huge number of cells, what we get is an experimental distribution of the RF7 expression, which shows these bimodality. So, and they have done time courses of that, so we see these distribution for different points in time after interference stimulation. So the uh, so the aim of it so. What the methodological part is here is how we fit a model to the observed data in order to find parameters and so on. But um, from a methodological point of view, it means that we want to test the hypothesis. And the hypothesis in this case would be a certain mechanism, and we want to see can this mechanism explain the observed by modality. And the hypothetical, or actually probably real mechanism in this case, is that the gene for this IRF7, uh, IRF7 gene has two binding sites for transcription factors. And I mean, the transcription is activated if both are bound. Um, and one of them is basically the end product that is activated by the Drexel pathway. And the other binding, binding site can bind the IRF7 gene uh, protein, which is actually the one that is expressed by that, by that gene. So there is a positive regulation by having a binding site here for the product of that, of that gene. And so basically, uh, that is this feedback. And this is put into a simple model. And so the, the whole JAXTA pathway is here basically put into just one equation. So that's a very simplified model. So this way of basically approximating the whole JAXTA pathway after interference stimulation is taken from uh, basically from a work from Thomas Herfer's group and is also published in that, in that experimental paper. And then Lewis basically added um, this uh, step for the uh, basically activation of the transcription by these two binding, uh, binding sites and then a simple model of transcription and translation and including this feedback. And, and this is basically the uh, deterministic or differential equation uh, let's say, um, implementation of that model. So you can basically write that model down as a deterministic differential equation model, but you can also simulate the same model, basically having the same elementary steps, in a stochastic framework. And both will be done in this method. So that would be typical simulation results for this model, where uh, a typical time course for the uh, for the activation of the transcription, basically the, the, uh, the transcription activation would be this, and typical time courses for mRNA and the, the actual protein would be this. And I mean, the gray again are what can happen if you repeat the simulation. 
So how would you do a parameter fitting of this, uh, of this thing? So generally, if you repeat the stochastic simulation, you get distribution of results. Um, and that could look like that. I mean, that's just an illustration. And on the other hand, you have a distribution that was observed during these repeated measurements on many single cells. And then, basically, you would, as in all kinds of parameter estimations, you would typically compare the two. In this case, we use a called Leibler divergence, which is just one measure, just a, a way to compare, to compare distributions. And then we would somehow repeat this process, basically repeat the simulation for different parameter sets, compare, and choose then, in the end, the parameter set for which these two basically are very similar, or most similar. Problem is, getting this distribution requires hundreds or thousands of stochastic simulations. Each stochastic simulation takes a finite time. And then you need to test many parameter sets, all that multiply, so you get a huge computational effort to actually do that. And now comes the trick, and that's the main point of, uh, of Lewis's approach, is that in order to make that much more efficient, he added an additional step of basically using a deterministic condition to decide whether it's worth doing the actual stochastic calculation. So what the, the thing is here is basically a random parameter set is selected, and then for the random parameter set for the deterministic model, we calculate <coughs> the steady states, the stability of the steady states, and the number of the steady states. And now there is an assumption, and that is a reasonable assumption, that if the stochastic model is supposed to be bimodal, that means the deterministic version of the model is supposed to have two stable steady states. And then you can also test if the two stable steady states are similar to the maxima of the peaks of the uh, observed distribution. And that's a little bit heuristic, but um, you can reason very well that this is a reasonable assumption. So basically, what the whole algorithm now does is draw random parameters, test if the deterministic version of the model has two steady states, two stable steady states that roughly correspond to the peaks of the distribution. And only if that is true, you actually do the stochastic simulation, calculate the stochastic distribution, compare it to the objective function, and, and perform the parameter estimation. And it turns out that uh, we uh, can get a roughly 100-fold reduction of computational time while still getting the same kind of fit. And basically, to conclude, this is, in this case, the uh, this is the experimental data where you see that after a short time, all are inactivated, and if t as time goes on, some of the cells get activated while others still stay inactive. And um, here you can see the best fit we could come up with. You can see that obviously the fit is not, po uh, not perfect, but reasonable taking into account how much simplified the model is. So we have a very simple model already fitting this bimodal distribution relatively well. And of course, we have ideas how we could improve that. But um, our, basically, our conclusion that it is possible to describe the bimodality by uh, assuming this, uh, this mechanism with the two binding sites and a positive feedback we can draw the conclusion it is possible to describe the data using the mechanism, <coughs> and that's what we wanted to do. Basically, Lewis did the work, Christoph Zimmer in our group uh, involved, was involved with the mathematics, Ursula and Frank, which I didn't put on the slide, unfortunately, were involved in helping with Kopasi, and uh, this groups provided the uh, experimental data, which we would like to thank for. Thank you. can return, so the simulations do not show it, so probably the data, after fitting, they don't do it, but the model would allow it. So you said you were testing the hypothesis that this mechanism is the real one. Uh, did you test different mechanisms? No, actually, I, 
I, maybe I misspoke. I was trying to be careful that we were testing the hypothesis if our mechanism can explain the data. Actually, there would be, of course, the next steps would be to, to make sure or what, I mean, to test other mechanisms to see if they could also explain the data. So that is not yet done. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Sure.